the day that I signed with Poker Stars, you know, it would have been four years, four years ago now. Um, I had my stream up and running. Like I had just started streaming six months ago. You know, signing with a poker company was like a pipe dream at that point for me. Like I, I had no chance really before Twitch to even be considered as a small stakes player, like mid stakes player taking shots. Wasn't very good. So in like six months time, my life totally changed. And uh, the day I got signed, I actually won the big 109 for the second time in a month. And it was like 20K back then because there was no knockouts or anything. Um, and, you know, like everyone in the company at PokerStars was hearing about this news of this new signing. So like all the employees at PokerStars were in the chat. It was just like an amazing intro. And you couldn't have written a better story as to how I got started with that. So that, I think, was the craziest day of my like my my poker life i started playing when i was 18 um and i kind of realized i wanted to be a professional golfer as as a young person so i was do, spending all my time on that and then when i turned 18 uh, i sort of realized i wasn't going to be tiger woods which was soul crushing um so partied a lot after high school was hanging out and then i found this poker thing and i started playing a little bit actually my brother matt and i used to compete with play chips on Zynga Poker to see who would have more play chips on the app, you know, because all your Facebook friends are on there. So that competition spurred me to like get better, look into real money sites, and uh, and then it kind of just kicked off from there. Um, I ended up getting fifth place in a three dollar rebuy on Poker Stars, which used to be huge back in the day, for twenty seven hundred, and you know my eighteen year old brain was like, "Yep, yeah, okay, I'm a poker pro now." quit my job, told all my friends. I was like, guys, I play poker for a living. It's not a big deal, but it's a thing. And uh, just, just so, so cocky and arrogant and like had no idea what I was doing. Um, and yeah, that was, that was my launch into poker when I was 18. I ran that down over the next few months, living at home to about $20 and about 30 bucks in my bank account. Um, but it was like the pure stubbornness of not wanting to tell all of my friends that I, I failed and have to get a job and like tell my parents that I failed, that I spun that $20 up to where I am today. So never made another deposit. Would you have done things differently? Maybe travel less? I'm sure traveling is, is gotta be extremely hard. You said you moved five, six locations during that time. That is, it is tough to pack up your stuff, get set up, deal with everything, and then still be, still be training and, and doing that. How was that? Yeah, actually the travel was nice, dude. I didn't mind it because it's like, my diet was primarily protein, so I could just go to restaurants and eat like steak and chicken and, and pork and vegetables. So it actually made it kind of fun because it was changing environments, changing scenery for doing exercise outside, which is a lot of what I was doing. Um, but honestly, if I could go back in time to the start of the bet, I wouldn't do it. Even as a winner, I wouldn't do it. Interesting. Wow, okay. Um, it, was, it was too intense. You know, and I've, I've felt the effects of, of how much of a toll that took like on me physically and mentally. Yeah. Uh, s still, you know, still deal with it. it. It was just such a sustained period of really intense cutting um, to where the 75K doesn't make enough of a difference. And of course, like professionally, we suffered in terms of, you know, you can't stream very well or very consistently when you have done three and a half hours of walking and you have 600 calories in you, you know, it's just like, you can't, you can't do very well. So of course, both of us took hits in terms of our professional pursuits in poker to get it done. So, um, but like the physical and the emotional toll is very high. Like I wouldn't recommend anyone go through that much of a crash diet or the crash bulk. Uh, it's just not, it's not worth it. It's a, it's a huge toll. I do think it's the most impressive thing that I've been able to do, and I'm proud of it. But I've also learned that I've learned how intense it is on your body. Like, how how did you feel about Matt kind of coming up and and wanting to do what you were doing? Matt's story is amazing. Like, you should really get him on the pod, and I know you will soon, because it it's been a crazy journey for him and in a very condensed time period. Uh, so he actually started out as an assistant for me. He needed a job. And I was like, well, I just started this Twitch thing. 
and I'm like waking up at eight and going to bed at 10 and I'm not leaving my desk. Like, can you help me? Um, he's like, yeah, cool. So he just started helping me with like general assistance stuff. Uh, we moved to Calgary and he started streaming a little bit on the side, like doing, doing a little bits of streams, playing a little bit of poker in his off time. And then one day in Calgary, he just told me like, all right, I'm done. I'm going to stream. And I was like, Matt, first of all, could you give me like a week notice? Second of all, I respect it. Like, good luck, man. Um, no, I, I think like taking risks in life and I'm biased because mine worked out, although I took a golf risk and it didn't work out. Um, I think taking risks for young people like Matt, if you're passionate about something, is just always the right move uh, as opposed to having regrets later in life of not giving it a shot. Um, it's a no risk thing for him, you know, like if it didn't work out for Matt or if it didn't work out for me, just like go home and go to school and get started, you know, four years later in life, like big deal. Right. So, uh, I was excited and optimistic for him from the beginning and clearly he has got what it takes where he's just crushing it in the poker streets, crushing it on the Twitch streets. Um, we're going to be living together here very soon. I'm going to see him in three days. So, um, He's done amazingly well, and uh, I'm super proud of him. Matt got sick a week before, or two weeks before, was very sick, and yeah. kind of threw things out of balance as well. That was crazy. People don't know that story. So Matt is like definitely allergic to nuts. Um, like, we'll go into a huge reaction. So he had a smoothie that he'd been having his whole time in Malta, uh, but they accidentally put peanut butter in it. So he took a sip. Within like three minutes, he talked to my brother. He's like, I think I'm having an allergic reaction. Um, so they hop in a taxi, they go to the hospital in Malta and Rebecca and I were living in a flat, like five minutes away at this point, cause there's a lot of us in, in Malta. So we catch a taxi and when I get there, he looks like a lobster. He's all puffy. He is red from his forehead down to his toes, like just bright red, you know, uh, thankfully his airway didn't close up, but he has a full out reaction. And I recently just had a reaction. So I sort of have some empathy as to how scary of an experience that is. Like you can't control it. It happens to you and you're just hoping that your airway doesn't close up and you don't die, right? Like that's terrifying. And the fear that comes from eating food after that is very strong. Um, you know, it's just like every time you eat, you have anxiety about, am I having a re reaction? Do I feel okay? Is this normal? So Matt was actually about three pounds no, he was actually two pounds away from what our, our weigh-in was, like two weeks from the actual weigh-in. You know, and, and so essentially, like, he was at a point where he almost regressed for a little bit in the last two weeks, and I had to go extra hard. Like, I was eating about 700 calories a day. But it was just incredibly stressful. Like, the worst possible thing that could have happened at that point two weeks out is him having this you know, life or death situation that creates an intense fear of, of food, you know? Um, so that was crazy, crazy, crazy that that happened. I mean, it's been a crazy journey for them. My, my parents, they're both retired now, but my dad is a musician. He was a prof at uh, Lethbridge University. And then my mom was a music teacher in high school, like band and choir and stuff. So, uh, you know, both being teachers, I don't think this was their first thought when raising us that this is what we were going to do. Um, but they're very supportive now, very happy for us. Like they're, they're always watching our streams. My mom is always up to date on, on social media. Like she's letting me know what's happening in the poker world when we talk on the phone, you know? Um, so when we got started, I mean, my parents were like, what are you doing? You know, <laughs> like, obviously I'm living in my parents' house and I'm quitting my job and living in my parents' house with like, $1,500 to my name. Of course they should be like that. Like, what? what is your plan? Um, what have we done, right? But I think over time, as results started to pile in and I showcased that I could support myself through playing poker, they became a bit more supportive. Um, and then like mainstream recognition in the poker world, like getting signed and stuff, you know, that's, that's a big deal to like normal people. When they see that, they're just like, oh, okay, so it's legit then. Um, so it's kind of a slow shift over time to them be, being a lot more accepting. And now they're uh, some of our biggest fans, I think, Matt, Matt and mine. So um, that's a really good feeling. But parents are risk averse and results oriented, which I'm sure you know, Jeff, right? Like they, they want to see the results before they can get on board and they don't want their offspring to take any risks 
because yeah. the the fear of them getting hurt is too much. You know, they yeah. want them to take the the, the well worn path, right? 